Today I'm going to be tackling the topic of masks in Photoshop Elements. If you've got Photoshop Elements version 9 or above on the Mac or the PC, you'll be able to follow along with my instructions. If you've got an earlier version of Photoshop Elements, you can download Grant's tools to get the masking tool added to your older version of Photoshop Elements. Today I'm working with Karen Lewis from her kit, Silly Billy. I've opened up one of the JPEG papers here that I'm going to use as a demo. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new document, file new, blank file, making it 12 by 12 inches at 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to open that and drag in the honeycomb paper that I want to use. Now let's zoom in so I can show you what we're going to do here. Now there's a few things you should know about masks. Masks are what we call a non-destructive edit. They're usually used in photo editing to hide parts of the photograph or apply effects to certain parts of a photograph. In our case, I'm going to start with a simple demonstration on how you could use it to cut out parts of this honeycomb. So let's head over to our selection tools and select the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to click and create a selection around just a few of the hexagons here. Almost as if I'm hand cutting it. When I get to the beginning of the selection, you'll see a little dot appear. If I click then, you'll know that it'll finalize that selection. Now I'm going to click on the Add Layer Mask icon on my Layers panel. And you'll notice that immediately it looks like it's being cut out from the paper. But in actuality, it's not cut out. It's just that I've applied a mask. If I hide my mask, you'll see that the whole paper is still there intact. It's just that the black area of the mask is hiding the rest of the pattern. The big thing to remember when you're working with masks is that white reveals and black conceals. So in this case my white has revealed only these seven hexagons and my black has concealed the rest. You can use masks in conjunction with a number of different tools. For example if I pull in another piece of paper onto my layout and then I use a marquee, uh, such as a rectangular marquee, draw a shape and click mask. It's now cut out just that section. If I then get my brush tool with some white, and go ahead and paint, you can see that it's slowly revealing parts of that paper. If I change over to the black brush, you'll see that it's now hiding those parts of the mask. So this means you can use mask in an artistic kind of way with kind of artsy strokes or you can use it almost like a die cut. It's also great for editing photographs. Let's pull in a photograph I've got here. 
Now in this case, I'm going to use my quick selection tool. Make sure I've got the photograph selected. And I'm going to just draw over Edward here and make sure he's the only thing selected. I can use the Alt key to remove parts of the selection there. Now this is a very rough selection but it'll give you the idea. If I then click on the mask, add layer mask, the rest of the photo disappears. Now I can go in with my white brush and add more. Say if we want to make sure his whole hand is there. and maybe a bit more grass. And depending on the look we're going for, we could leave it sort of sketchy, or we could zoom in and start getting really precise on the parts of the photograph that we want to mask in and out. For example, if we zoom in here, we can see that his little ear is cut off a bit. So we use our white brush to draw part of the ear back in. Again, we could use our white brush to just draw part of his head back in that's been missed. We could use the black brush here to just remove that green reflection of the end. Now if you're masking a photograph or perhaps you're cutting out some little patterned um, flowers from a paper. You might want to use a couple of different techniques. So for example, I could add a new layer. By clicking on the new layer icon and fill it with white and then I would notice all the little parts that I can then brush away. Now when we come to work on our photograph again we need to make sure that we've selected this mask area not the actual photo. So if we start drawing on our photo then we'll come into Strive. So I'm going to get my black brush and make it a little smaller and draw around the edge. Now this isn't some this is a technique called extracting and it's not something I do on every layout as I find it time consuming. If you're very keen on doing things like fantasy scenes where you may put your child in a little fairy garden or something, you'll often see scrappers doing this. It's very creative and a lot of people really enjoy the look that gives. For me, I tend to be a bit of a faster scrapper or I try to get my pages done as, uh, a little faster than that and I'm quite slow at extracting there. You can always undo if you mess anything up there. So I'm actually cutting off a little bit more than what you might think just so that there's no blue halos around his ears, etc. If you find you've cut off too much, you just swap over to your white brush and you brush it back in. So when you've got rid of all the scraggly bits that don't look good on white, Change your foreground colour to black, use your fill bucket and see how it looks on black. That's when you'll notice other little imperfections and things like holes in your mask. So click on your mask again, get your white brush tool and draw over any of those black specks that shouldn't be there. As you could see, you could spend a lot of time on an extraction like that. But this is just one of the ways that you can use the mask tools 
to help create a very creative layout. When you're working with masks layers, you can actually hide the mask by clicking on the layer and then shift clicking on the mask thumbnail. So you can see before and after. As you can see, you can use all sorts of applications for your mask. You could extract a photograph, cut around some pattern paper or an embellishment, or even create a more freeform look. If you decide that you want to get rid of the mask on a layer, you can press click on the mask and then press delete. You'll be faced with three options. Apply will apply the mask and throw out all the pixels that are black in your mask. So now I no longer have a mask and only Edward is appearing. If I click cancel it will do nothing and if I click delete it will simply delete my mask and leave my picture as it was before I started editing. There's no need to delete your masks unless you are wanting to do reduce the file size of your um, PSD file. So I usually leave them in place in case I want to come back and edit something later. Would you like to learn more about Photoshop Elements 11? Head over to digitalscrapbookinghq.com for tutorials, workshops and more.